All right, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Versailles Church of Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday evening uh, devotional. Uh, to all our members that are watching this, to all any visitors that we may have, thank you for, for joining me tonight. I do appreciate it. Uh, I always appreciate your presence in this format. Uh, remind everybody that we are meeting at the building at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, and so we'll be there. This video goes live at, at 6.45, and so people should be arriving to the building as we speak. But we're thankful that you are joining with us in this way. Let me uh, let me remind everybody of our prayer list. We have a, a very extensive prayer list. A lot of people that are struggling with cancer, uh, illnesses, just all kinds of things going on, and we need to be praying to God on behalf of them. So please be mindful of that list. For our visitors, uh, if you would like for us to pray with you, um, sorry, text message trying to deal with. I'm trying to multitask, and sometimes that's. I've, I've, I've heard that we're not we're not created to multitask. We need to focus on one thing. Uh, but for our visitors, uh, you know, if we would love to pray for you, uh, we would love to pray with you. So if you would, you can reach uh, reach us through our website. There's a link in the notes below that will take you there, and you'll find out information about who we are, what we believe, as well as a contact us link that will let you send us your info. We would love to hear from you to know that you were with us. Uh, to know that you know you have a prayer request or a Bible related question, we would love to help you with those things. So please reach out to us in that way. Uh, again, we're meeting at seven o'clock on Wednesdays. We are we are back to having uh, full services on Sunday. So nine thirty for Bible classes, ten thirty for worship, and then we are meeting at five o'clock for our Sunday evening Bible study. So please uh, invite you to please start coming back and being with us for worship. We are still wearing um, masks and, and sitting a pew apart, uh, but we're together and we're worshiping together and we would love to have you with us. And let me also just take a minute to thank everybody that has subscribed to this YouTube channel. I, I was looking at the, the um, studio aspect of today and I saw we've reached 100 subscribers. And you know, that just makes me smile because a lot of a lot of smaller congregations, a lot of big congregations have a hard time getting to 100 subscribers and we've hit 100 subscribers and that's that's just super awesome. I'm just so I'm so thrilled that we have hit that landmark. So that enables us now to do a little bit more customization, customizing to the to the channel itself. So you're going to see a few things happen in the coming weeks. And so I'll try and keep everybody updated as we do those things. If you notice our our profile picture, it was of just a uh, like a light reddish pink color with a V on it. Now it's a picture of the church building. That's the first change. And so you'll see some more changes happen in the weeks to come. So to everyone that has subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, encourage your friend to subscribe. Let's let's keep you know let's not just stop at a hundred. Let's keep it going um, and, and keep those numbers growing. As as with all the videos, please. Hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Leave a comment below. I'd always appreciate them. And, and you know, let's continue to, to let this uh, midweek devotional encourage us and strengthen us in our walk with God and our knowledge of His Word. So we're continuing to kind of, and, you know, work through the Psalms as we are reading through them in our daily Bible reading program. If you are interested in that, by the way, you can also find that on our webpage. There's a, a Bible study link, and the, there you will find uh, uh, our, our, web, our website designer has gracious, graciously put a lot of work into that, and so there's links that will take you to, to the actual chapters that we're reading every day, or you can download a full list of what we read throughout the year, so check that out. But in our daily Bible reading uh, for this week, one of the Psalms that we read is Psalm 23. What a great psalm that is, and we're going to talk about that just for a, a few minutes this evening. So if you'd like to read along with me, let's open our Bibles and read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table, table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
What kind of psalm is Psalm 23? Is it a a psalm of, of wisdom? Is it a psalm of encouragement? How, how about, it? you know, it's a psalm that speaks about trust and confidence in God. Is it not a psalm that 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 reveals the confidence that we all have when we find ourselves in the presence of God, when we when we know that He is bestowing His blessings, His goodness upon us. Is it not a psalm that expresses faith in God, faith that we can trust in God in this life and in the life to come, that God will take care of us? All of the above. Uh, psalm 23 is a psalm of, of trust, of confidence, uh, it is a psalm of faith. It is a psalm of comfort. Uh, I mean, how I use this psalm many times uh, when I'm trying to talk to people about uh, who I have who are dealing with the loss of a loved one. I will read it, um, you know, at the burial site um, because it brings comfort to many. Uh, you know, it's you know, dealing with death is is one of the great difficulties that we all have to deal with in this life, and this psalm extends comfort to us during those times. It, 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 it just reveals to us God's grace and His power, and it gives us hope. And so, you know, just a few things I think we should take note of when it comes to Psalm 23 are the metaphors that the psalmist, uh, that, that David uses in, in describing God and his, and his nature and His good nature. He says that the Lord is a shepherd who is interested in, in not just the flock of sheep that he guards, but the individual sheep. And the Lord is a, a gracious host who prepares this banquet of plenty for his guests. So, that's the two metaphors that David uses in this psalm. Let's, let's just take a few minutes to talk about each one of them. First, uh, we find that David says the Lord is a, a shepherd, the first four, the first four verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. All of this is kind of identifying God as a shepherd, but I want you to think about that very first statement that David says. The picture that he describes of a God who is personal, a God who who provides, a God who protects. The Lord is my shepherd, David says. My shepherd. Uh, you know, God's, he, he understands God and the, the shepherd-like qualities that are ascribed, ascribed to him. Uh, you know, I go back to what God said to Israel in Exodus chapter 34. The Lord um, proclaimed, verses 6 and 7, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins. You know, God was presenting to, to the people and letting them know that he was going to be this all-encompassing God who took care of them. David kind of takes all that and says, you know, God, he's like a shepherd. He's going to take care of us like a shepherd would take care of his sheep. And it's just awesome how David at the very beginning makes it personal. Because he says, the Lord, Yahweh, is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. I know we, we often think of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as being the shepherd uh, for everybody, for the church as a whole, for the family of God, and rightly so. But let's also not forget that He is our shepherd as individuals. In other words, God knows us as individuals, and He looks after us as individuals. He protects us as individuals, as well as He does for the family of God as a whole. That's that's just speaking to who God is. He is this good shepherd who cares for and provides and protects each and every one of us because we're all different and we all have uh, cares in, in, that are different, needs that are different, protections that are different, and God knows this and David knows this. And so David says, the Lord is my shepherd and because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God will take care of you and me. 
Uh, the shepherd lays down the sheep, leads them to still waters, feeds them, nourishes them, guides them. God, what, what, when Jesus, you know, was teaching his disciples how to pray, what does he say? God, give us our daily needs. God cares for us daily. He gives to us what we need daily. He protects us daily, guides us daily. The rod, the staff, what was the rod for? To protect the sheep from the world, from, from, from the wolves and the and the, the staff, that hooked staff, to guide sheep along the, the safe path. So shepherds, they had this constant vigilance over their flock of sheep uh, with, with having to take care of them, having to lead them beside, you know, we're going to make sure we lead them to the right pasture. we got to lead them to water that they're going to be able to drink and that they might not drown in. We're going to make sure they have a place to rest. We're going to have this rod to protect them from the wolves that might take them away. We have this staff that's long and, and it's going to help us keep them on the right path. They, they were vigilant. God is vigilant. God is constantly watching out for his sheep. He is constantly protecting, constantly comforting, constantly leading. I love what David says. God, as the shepherd, makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul, leads me in paths of righteousness. You know, green pastures, rich plas rich pastures, plenty of food for the sheep. The sheep would not have to move about to be satisfied, to be filled. But, you know, from an earthly perspective, a green pasture is only green for so long, right? It's a, it's a seasonal phenomenon. The fields would only become green during certain times of the year. They weren't constant. But God's care is constant. It's not seasonal. It's abundant. It's everything. It's everywhere. It's all the time. God will provide our needs all the time. He will provide our rest all the time. He will provide those waters of nourishment, those living waters, all the time. That's what God does as the good shepherd, renewing his sheep, providing his sheep, uh, guiding his sheep. You know, the psalmist says that, you know, um, he leads me in paths of righteousness. Part of a shepherd's job was to guide his sheep along the way. And who does that any more better than God? God does. He leads his sheep in paths of righteousness. A path that is straight, that is not crooked, that does not lead to a dangerous place. But why? Because God's always with us and God is righteousness. And so we see the presence of God at work. He's guiding us all the time. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just amazing to think of God as our shepherd and all that he def, does for us. How comforting, is he, how comforting is it for you right now in this very moment to know that God is your shepherd and that he is providing nourishment for you, refreshment for you, rejuvenation for you, providing you with everything that you need, protecting you from things that you are not even aware of and continuing to guide you even when you may think you're lost, God is there. That, that is God, our shepherd. But we also see God as a, a good host, a good host, a gracious host. Verses 5 and 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we're moving from God being a shepherd to God being a good host. As a good host, the table that God prepares is filled. It is, it's, it's just just overflowing with food and drink and before we are even able to sit down at this feast at this in this banquet hall god is there to anoint us with oil in those times when a host would have a meal he would honor his guest by taking oil that had been mixed together with with perfumes of some kind and 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 anoint his guests cleanse them you know it's symbolic of the grace and benevolence that the host was extending to his guest. Well, God, by anointing uh, his his people, his guest, God is you know showing us that he cares, that he provides you know, green pastures, still waters. Well, we see that in the same with a table that is filled with a cup 
that is overflowing, that is being anointed with oil, and God does it all in front of our enemies. We are vindicated by God. Uh, yes, on the one hand, the psalmist is saying there, um, you know, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, adversities in this life are going to happen. They're real. There's no getting around it. Yet God is greater. God's going to take care of us even in the presence of our enemies. He's going to prepare a table before us. Uh, his love is, is going to be extended. It's going to be poured out so that our cup is overflowing. And so when we find ourselves before adversity, when we are struggling way down by all the, the dark sinfulness of this life, the presence of God in our lives, the, the fragrant rewards that He has given us, that oil, that cup, that bounty, we can forget about the struggles because God deliver us. God delivers us from them. God takes care of us in the, in the presence of such natures. So throughout all this, David, seeing God as a shepherd, seeing God as a host, he, he, he knows where to put his loyalty. He's confident in that God's going to be loyal to him. Because instead of him being pursued by enemies, he looks to God's goodness and love. When I read this psalm, it makes me think about the invitation that we've been given. The invitation that is seen in the goodness and love of Jesus Christ, who died on a cross and in doing so, invited you and I to come into God's house and to sit at God's table and eat from a bounty that God has prepared for us. That invitation and all that God has done speaks to the covenant that He wants to have with you. That He wants to have with anyone who would believe and obey His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. What a great song. What a powerful song. To know that God has invited us to dwell in His house. And it's not just for a party. For a one night party. No, it's for eternity. To live with our Lord. To sit at His table every single day. And eat from what He has provided. And drink from the cup that He overfills every single time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because my God is with me. His rod, His staff, they comfort me. God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Because of all of this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I hope that you will follow Jesus Christ. I hope you will receive and embrace that invitation that He has given to you to come into His Father's house and to sit at His Father's table and eat and drink with Him. Would you bow with me as we close together? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank You for this day. Thank You for Your Son and His precious blood and the invitation that is extended to all of us uh, to know You, to have You be our shepherd to have you be a host and that would invite us into your home and be in your presence and eat at your table, Lord. Help us to respond. Help us to submit. Help us to obey. Help us to place our faith and our trust in you. Forgive us when we fall short, Lord. Please be with those that we care about. Uh, please look into our hearts and, and know the things that we struggle with and, and give us our daily needs and help us to be there for those that we love. Support them, pray for them, and stand by them. Thank you for all the things that you do for us. Thank you for letting us pray to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you again for joining me tonight. I hope that this uh, little devotional through Psalm 23 has been a blessing to you. I hope you have a great week. I hope that you are able to uh, share Jesus with someone. I hope someone will share Jesus with you. And I invite you to be with us this coming Lord's Day at 930. Until then, may God bless you and your family with grace and with peace. I'll see you later.